was fantastic, especially the M2, which many considered the best M car in the entire range. Think about that. As SUVs continue to take over the world, it's nice and refreshing to see a simple two-door coupe on the road. The one I'm driving right now is rear-wheel drive, which in theory makes it the Driver's Car 2 Series despite it being the entry-level model. This is a 2022 BMW 230i, and we're gonna find out whether or not that's true. Now let the music play. Before we get too far along in the review, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and help us grow. You can also find us and interact with us on social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. So the 2 Series is new for this model here, and it joins the 2 Series Grand Coupe, which is the four-door version, but that's more closely related to the SUVs and it's front-wheel drive based. For anybody that enjoys a drive in the canyons like I'm doing right now, this is the one to have. It's rear-wheel drive based. And for right now, it's available in two flavors. There's four-cylinder rear-wheel drive 230i or six-cylinder all-wheel drive M240i. Right away, I'll say I wasn't expecting to love this powertrain, but that's because I love BMW six cylinders. I always have. Credit where it's due, this little four cylinder is not too bad. It's rated at 255 horsepower, but I'm telling you, it feels more powerful than that. It just does. Uh, BMW says zero to 60 in 5.5 seconds, but I swear to you, that is only because there's a good bit of turbo lag from a dead stop. When you're already on the move like I am now, you add a little bit of power, and it's super responsive. It, it picks up speed uh, much faster than you think it would. And it doesn't sound all that bad. I mean, four cylinders are either just entirely anonymous or they're kind of buzzy and nasty sounding. This is actually very pleasant, at least from inside the cabin. That said, the noise sounds like it's coming in more through the speakers rather than from under the hood, but I guess that's just a product of modern cars more than anything else. The other half of the powertrain that I have to compliment is the ZF 8-speed automatic. Now, I was hard on the new M3, M4 because I felt like when they made the switch from the dual clutch to the 8-speed, the car lost a bit of edge. It, it just didn't shift with the same snappiness that you want it to. I don't know what changed between the M3 to this car, but this is the best version of the 8-speed that I've felt in any modern BMW. You shift and it immediately changes gear even if you're off the throttle, which sometimes the 8-speed is a little lazy to do that. Really impressed with the transmission tuning here. If somebody went through and spec this thing the exact way you would want it uh, to handle, that means dynamic handling package and M-Sport package. The former adds the M-Sport differential and bigger brakes, while the latter tweaks the steering, the suspension, and it adds bigger tires with the bigger optional wheels. Through some twisty roads here, I like the steering feel. It's less manic and intense than recent BMWs I've driven, like the M3 or M4. But it's still quick enough that you can move the car from left to right aggressively. The brakes, the brakes have a lot to give at high speeds. They do a really good job of controlling your speed, but around town, they're way too touchy. They're very hard to get used to and you end up jerking back and forth quite a bit. I'm not sure that's worth the trade-off. I would probably stick with the standard brakes, especially considering this is the lighter weight car. You probably don't need them anyway. There's a bit more body roll than I would have thought, but you know what? That's okay. It makes the car feel a little bit more playful and alive through corners just like this. And finally, the suspension. I have to give BMW a lot of credit. The tuning here feels just right. It's still aggressive, but it's not overly stiff. And we end up coming back and saying that of a lot of BMWs lately. The final note here is that the car doesn't feel small. It doesn't shrink around you all that much. It feels smooth, it feels sophisticated, but it doesn't feel small. And there's a reason for that. And that's because the 2 Series is bigger this time around. It's 2.6 inches wider than before, 4.3 inches longer overall, and there's two more inches between the wheelbase. For what it's worth, it also gained a bit of weight. 
the added dimensions have done a good bit for the proportions overall, especially from the side profile. Just look at it. There's really neat things to point out. The hood line is long and it's elegant. There's this power bulge that's included right in the middle. And then because of that longer wheelbase, well, I think it looks very planted. There's, there's a nice stance to it. And this flush door handle, this is new BMW design. We're starting to see that included in its electric vehicles and I love that they brought it here too. And then looking at the details, the good definitely outweighs the bad. The front of this car is genuinely handsome. Because it's a BMW, we have to look at the grill and analyze it. It's fine, it's a little bit wider, but it looks good. And it has these slats that open and close when the car needs to cool down a bit more. This car has the M Sport package, which actually does a lot to make it look distinct, at least from the outside. Uh, with the M Sport, you get these fangs, these giant sort of triangles that run into the center of the car, and they're done in black. BMW calls it shadow line, but it's effectively just black trim. It's all over the car's face. There's shadow line black in these 19 inch optional wheels, and the trim goes black around the windows. It looks nice. I love the way the M Sport makes this car look more aggressive. The rear end is the only part where you kind of lose me, and that's just because of the tail light. You look at that sharp red streak that's just dominant in the module, and it looks like a supervillain's eyes just looking at you, ready to kill you. And when you open the door and get inside, you're greeted by what I think is a very nice interior. The only questionable bit for me is right next to me where somebody had a little bit of fun with a triangle press and put it on the door panel. It just kind of sticks out at you for no apparent reason. Simple, right in front of you. There's a touch screen, which is very easy to control just like this. In fact, it makes me wonder why the iDrive controller is still here. At least with a car like the 2 Series, where you're so close, you can do everything with your hands. And honestly, it's very quick to respond. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are wireless. I love that. Um, and then the gauge cluster in front of you, Although you can't really configure it as much as I would like, the graphics are awesome, and I love the way the design is uh, with the rev counter. There's also some nice details. We have a wireless charging pad. Uh, I have a 12 Max, which I think is the biggest iPhone you can get, and it barely fits but you kind of put it away and it starts charging like that. This car with the premium package has full navigation and it has heated seats, a heated steering wheel and power seats on both sides. Also, I love that it's just the right amount of bolstering for a driver's car, but not enough to where it's uncomfortable. Uncomfortable is behind me in the back seat. Look at this clip right now and see how long it takes just to get back there. You have to pull the latch, then the driver's seat or passenger seat slowly automatically goes forward, then you pull it back. And by the time you get back there, you realize that there is not enough room for an average size adult. Some would consider me a below average size adult. I'm five foot eight and you can see just how much headroom I don't have back there. This is a case where if you do want to include more than one passenger in your normal driving habits, you might have to consider something bigger like a three series. The 2022 BMW 230i scores a 7.7 .7 out of 10 on our star rating scale. That one's tough for me because as a driver's car, this should easily be in the eight. It's an absolute joy. But when you rate it as a whole, it drops for two particular reasons. The first is pricing. This car starts at just under $37,000, but this car, the way we have it, with the M Sport package, dynamic handling, and the premium package, it's about $46,000 out the door. That's over a 20% increase in pricing, which is not something small. Then you have safety. This car is missing adaptive cruise control, which is really a feature that we've come to expect for a car that costs over $40,000. Things that are half this price have it standard. If you're okay with those two missteps, this is still a fantastic driver's car and one that I would recommend overall. Thanks for watching.